Hello and uh, welcome to Politics Today. Uh, in this programme today, we'll be discussing the ongoing drama in uh, Westminster as we see that Brexit is on a knife edge. And in today's programme, I'm joined by Oleb Snelling, the, uh, the chairperson of uh, the Christian Broadcasting Council, and uh, David Hughes for Prayer for Parliament. So welcome to the Thank programme. Um, Olive, welcome back. It's good Thank to you. see you back on the programme. Thank uh, you. And I know that you've been um, away yes. in Africa. Yes. Um, so what perspective do you have looking as an outsider into what's been happening with our politics over the last few weeks in regarding Brexit. I mean, this is like unprecedented drama um, that we're seeing. It's almost like a, a, a play being staged uh, on, on the theatre that without any of us really knowing the, the end plot or the end game. Well, it was fascinating being in South Africa, first of all, obviously, because that was where I was born and grew up, um, in Lesotho. And we watched the television every single night we turned on Sky News, that's one that my sister likes best, I think they're good. And we've honestly jaw-dropping, jaw-dropping stuff. And we, we were watching this and I was praying away like mad all the time. And praying for, praying for a, a yeah, for, for breakthrough from the Lord uh, to free us from the shackles um, of Europe. Not because we hate Europe. In fact, I love Europe. Um, I'm a good European in the sense that I speak extremely good French, I speak very good German, I have lived in Europe, and I love Europe. What I don't like, I don't like at all the, the EU. And so, so it has been, you know, it's been a fantastic, uh, oh my, roller coaster ride. And every night when I've gone to sleep and I'm praying to, praying to the Lord, that Lord, what on earth is happening? Thank you, Lord. You are in control. None of our politicians are in control. Theresa May is not in control. You, Lord, you, Lord, our Lord, you are in control. <laughs> and we have no idea how this thing is going to play out. But I believe that it's going to come to an absolute to a crescendo. And that there's going to be one terrific bust up. And, you know, we know that the Lord is on our side. And we're praying that he will take us out. So when you follow all of the ins and outs of the arguments, you could get lost. But if you just follow that straight, as straight as the die, you know that the Lord is our Lord and that he is going to deliver us and he is going to bring us through this time of trial. And we say amen to that. Definitely, definitely. And, and as of uh, today's uh, recording, I'm just going to give you some of the headlines um, because politics is moving so quickly and so fast that we're in danger of being out of date. So as of today's recording, this is one of the headlines. Uh, we're on uh, a no deal knife edge, and that's the uh, Daily Mail. And then if I take the Times, uh, the Times says voters uh, back uh, May's Brexit plan, May warns MPs. Um, David, now it's been over a thousand days since the British people uh, voted in that very famous historic referendum that we had on our membership of the European Union. Would you imagine back then, back in June, all the political trauma that we're seeing today and the turmoil this is causing in uh, across our country, but particularly in the House of Commons? Uh, no, but it doesn't come as a surprise. Uh, if you remember, I've said on this programme before that 23 years ago, Chuck Pearce gave a prophetic word to um, the Prayer for Parliament team that, uh, that there would come a time when Parliament hadn't a clue what they were doing. They would be completely out of sync, uh, they would be confused, and that was the time when the intercessors would be literally interceding uh, for what God's will is. And that's really come about uh, since January when we had the um, National Day of Prayer. Uh, we've, our team has increased to about nearly 50 coming into Parliament, not all, all at the same time at the moment, but real strong intercessors. There's so much prayer going on in this nation yes. now. It's absolutely fantastic. I, I think there's just as much prayer, if not more, than since 
Mm. the World War II, when we had to intercede. Um, but Parliament had got themselves in a re riot twist. They don't understand what's going on. There's so much confusion. Um, we have a, a meeting every now and again with, with Christian MPs, and, and they agree that, that you know, the, the, the MPs are frightened, they're trying to protect their jobs, and they're completely out of sync with the general public. Um, there's a chart here, and I'd just like to, to read out, because it's very uh, revealing. Um, uh, the chart is about the referendum results in 2016 and it says by vote 17.4 million were voting for leave or wanted to leave, 16.1 million to remain. Well that's quite close but when you go down to constituencies you've got 406 constituencies want to leave, 242 want to remain and when you get constituency by party Labour, 148 wanted to leave and 84 wanted to remain. And when you get to the Conservatives, 247 wanted to leave and 80 wanted to remain. By region, nine regions wanted to leave and only three wanted to remain. But when you come to MPs, by MP, it's 160 wanted to leave and 486 wanted to remain. So the Brexit isn't the problem. It's the MPs who are the problem because they're completely out of sync. And when you get those facts, it is so clear this nation wants to leave. And I think what's happened now is that so many people out there are so fed up with the way it's been going on. They're fed up with the rebellion and everything else going on in Parliament. They just fed up with politics altogether and they just want to get out. And the other thing is, I mean, where are we with, with our situation? Um, in, in the situation night before last or just recently, um, the figures came out for unemployment in this nation. Unemployment was the best, lowest since 1974. And we got Brexit around the corner. It doesn't add up. But I think the people are going to be able to see through the clouds and, the, and through the trees like they did for the referendum. Excellent. That, that was really good, and thank you for, for reading out the figures. I think that's very important. But uh, those figures, um, Olive, definitely demonstrate one thing, uh, and that is that it seems that Parliament is at odds with the will of the people. Um, and therefore, since we've had that, we've had uh, the, uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, Berku, trying to block uh, Theresa May's deal. Uh, we've had the, uh, our MPs block a no deal, um, saying that uh, we can't go without a deal and the deal must be reached. Um, isn't there a great danger that our, uh, so many of our MPs are also calling for a second referendum? They don't want us to leave the European Union and therefore they are ultimately subverting our democracy. Well, it, it's absolutely as plain as a pike staff, isn't it? I mean, the fact is that um, it is the, the MPs themselves that are impeding the progress of, of uh, Brexit. And so what, what, you know, what we've been praying for as intercessors, um, I absolutely agree 100% with you, David, what you've been saying about your intercessors and the group that you belong to. The same with the group that I belong to and that I head up. Of intercessors. I mean, it's just been an extraordinary thing. In other words, you're looking beyond um, the, uh, the politics. You're looking beyond the machinations, and and realizing, of course, that it is the it is the parliamentarians themselves who who have caused this incredible problem. And so, when we look look back to the to the referendum in, in 2016, I mean, that to me was was the hand of God. That was a miraculous vote. And uh, um, as a result of that, you know, Theresa May and many of the other politicians are saying, no, we are delivering exactly what the people voted for. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. That is absolutely not. And, uh, and when you actually think of the deal that, that Theresa May has produced, how on earth can you be half in and half out of the European Union? It's, it's an impossibility. And you were saying earlier, Simon, that there are sort of resonances with, uh, you know, peace in our time, um, saying, you know, every, peace, peace, when, where there is no peace. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. And therefore, that we have to look beyond, as we talk today around, around this table and, and talk to you, is to see that, that we have got to look beyond uh, the, what is happening 
kind of on the ground and to understand what is happening spiritually. And spiritually, we are in a battle mm. to end all battles. I mean, monumental, yeah. monumental spiritual battle. And we know, we know what, what the Lord says about that. And he is on our side. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, <laughs> even though it's the politicians that are doing. We wrestle against principalities and powers. You know, an, an incredible, malign uh, policies in heavenly places. You know, yeah. that's what we're fighting against. I mean, the MPs are literally <coughs> trying to protect their jobs. And uh, they're going against what, uh, I mean, Anna Seabury, for example, her constituency is a leave constituency, but she's not doing what the majority want. Uh, I'm talking about the spiritual warfare. Uh, we were literally, David Hathaway joined us in Parliament even this last week. We've, we prayed against um, the, the spirit of Babylonian spirit, which is confusion, because there's so much confusion going on. Uh, we bound up uh, Lucifer, uh, and also Gog and Magog, which are over um, in London. And there is an absolute battle, and we've got to sever that line. Absolutely. So let's go now and uh, listen to uh, Theresa May speaking in uh, Downing Street, in which she wants to extend Article 50 by delaying our departure uh, from the European Union. It was supposed to take place on March the 29th, but now she wants to postpone it till the 30th of June. Nearly three years have passed since the public voted to leave the European Union. It was the biggest democratic exercise in our country's history. I came to office on a promise to deliver on that verdict. In March 2017, I triggered the Article 50 process for the UK to exit the EU, and Parliament supported it overwhelmingly. Two years on, MPs have been unable to agree on a way to implement the UK's withdrawal. As a result, we will now not leave on time with the deal on the 29th of March. This delay is a matter of great personal regret for me. And of this I am absolutely sure you, the public, have had enough. You're tired of the infighting, you're tired of the political games and the arcane procedural rows. Tired of MPs talking about nothing else but Brexit when you have real concerns about our children's schools, our national health service, knife crime. You want this stage of the Brexit process to be over and done with. I agree. I am on your side. It is now time for MPs to decide. So today I have written to Donald Tusk, the President of the European Council, to request a short extension of Article 50 up to the 30th of June to give MPs the time to make a final choice. Do they want to leave the EU with a deal which delivers on the result of the referendum that takes back control of our money, borders and laws while protecting jobs and our national security? Do they want to leave without a deal? Or do they not want to leave at all, causing potentially irreparable damage to public trust, not just in this generation of politicians, but to our entire democratic process? It is high time we made a decision. So far, Parliament has done everything possible to avoid making a choice. Motion after motion and amendment after amendment has been tabled without Parliament ever deciding what it wants. All MPs have been willing to say is what they do not want. I passionately hope MPs will find a way to back the deal I've negotiated with the EU. A deal that delivers on the result of the referendum and is the very best deal negotiable. And I will continue to work night and day to secure the support of my colleagues, the DUP and others for this deal but I am not prepared to delay Brexit any further than the 30th of June. Some argue that I'm making the wrong choice and I should ask for a longer extension to the end of the year or beyond to give more time for politicians to argue over the way forward. That would mean asking you to vote in European elections 
nearly three years after our country decided to leave. What kind of message would that send? And just how bitter and divisive would that election campaign be at a time when the country desperately needs bringing back together? Some have suggested holding a second referendum. I don't believe that's what you want, and it is not what I want. We asked you the question already, and you gave us your answer. Now you want us to get on with it, and that is what I am determined to do. And uh, we are truly living in historical times and Brexit is definitely on the knife edge. Um, I want to ask you, David, about the kind of latest political twists. And this is um, by uh, Donald Tusk, who has now raised the stakes by saying that um, he will only agree to Britain leaving the European Union on the 30th of June if... MPs vote for Theresa May's Brexit deal, which is going to be very difficult because the Speaker of the House has said there can't be another vote unless there's substantial changes. Um, so it very much looks as if the case is if uh, the EU might be deliver or deliverer. Who would have thought that? I think that's absolutely right. Um, we've been praying in the central lobby right in the middle of Parliament. Um, Proverbs 18.21 says that the power of life and death is in the tongue and we've been speaking uh, 29th of March into the infrastructure so that the Brexit happens on time because it's in the law. Because they've got to, if, if, he, if they don't deliver, then the law will happen. Uh, I believe that, that, that it could well be that the, the uh, EU, by default, make us leave on the 29th. And, and Olive, I think what, what's uh, extraordinary from this position is to look at the position of the European Union. Clearly, they are absolutely fed up with, uh, with Britain and the, the Brexit negotiations. It's very clear from the EU that they, no matter how many times Theresa May goes to Brussels, they are not going to change the deal that they've offered Britain, which would allow would create Britain as a, a, a vassal state. Um, so we're neither in, we're neither out. We have no say on, on the direction the EU takes. We have no voting. Um, and, and yet we can't get any better trade deals from the EU. So we're locked in for a generation with only kind of loose ties to that of the European Union. Um, and when we see what's happening on the continent, we see the, the, um, the rise of the, of the political right in Poland and in Italy. We know that the forthcoming European elections are going to probably deliver the most anti-EU parliament in the EU's history. Uh, and so therefore the EU's got to do with this one. Do you think they're looking and seeing all the political chaos that's taking place on our nation, the chaos that this has caused in, in, in Westminster and thought, this is your punishment, you can keep the 39 billion or whatever it is that we owe you. Um, this is a mess and uh, you know, this is your consequences for actually leaving the European Union and this is the price to you pay. Do you think that within the EU, this is how they're looking at it? I do think that. Um, what, what, I, what I surmise, and I know that David, that you agree, is that in, by curious irony, um, the actual EU itself uh, is working in our favour according to um, what, how we see the, the plan unfolding under God, because our main aim is to be a sovereign nation again under God. And as we've said many times, uh, even in this programme, that the issues are not political, economic, they're spiritual. Absolutely. We're involved in the yeah. most unbelievable fight in the heavenly places. You know, and, then, and what, we, what we know from scripture says that, you know, that, that we are mighty through God mm. to the pulling down of strongholds. This is one almighty stronghold. I would love to just read a little bit from scripture, yeah, 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 if I ahead. may. Go ahead. Uh, because this was in praying for uh, yeah, absolutely, ideas. just before the Lord, absolutely crying out to the Lord about Brexit. And, um, and we were given the Psalm 124, and it's absolutely incredible. It says, if, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us, the stream would have gone over our soul, 
then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I believe that the snare is broken and we have escaped and we stand on that. I have been standing along with other intercessors um, on, on, that, uh, on, on that scripture. And so I think that by default, probably even because Theresa May was trying to engineer things so that she ruled out um, uh, no deal. But I don't think it's going to work. Absolutely. So, our prayer, our prayer is uh, absolutely. Uh, David, before I go on on this one, because yeah. I think we need to discuss something that is also very, very important in this one, is, is as of the filming of this uh, recording today, yes. uh, Theresa May is having a vote next week um, on the final attempt to try and get her, her deal through Parliament, It'll be a third attempt, and all the political commentators are saying that if she fails this time, um, then she's out. So we could be facing in the next few weeks and when this program's aired a leadership contest for the Prime Minister so in your terms uh, meeting with MPs and, and praying in Parliament um, who would you like to see uh, be our next Prime Minister? Oh my goodness um, they're not they're not even thinking on that when we met up with the Christian MPs um, that's the furthest from our thoughts at this might time but who would we want um, I mean a lot of people are talking about Boris Johnson um, the, uh, I, think it, I think at the end of the day, it's got to be a Brexiteer. It's got to be a Brexiteer because that's, we need someone who understands what getting out of, of, of you know, Parliament, getting out of EU is. Um, our prayers have always just been, Lord, let your will be done in Parliament, let your will be done in the voting lobbies. And we've even had uh, the staff there really impressed with our, our team. Do you remember that uh, one of the votes was the Parliament wanted to take over uh, the whole situation from the government, and um, they lost by two votes. Well, we had about 20 people in there. We were interceding at the whole time. But the but EU is getting all rattled. Um, just a quick one. Uh, David Hathaway came back, and it was in the press. Switzerland is watching us. The Swiss are watching what's going on here. And the reason they're doing it is because the EU have said to Switzerland, who have free trade, by June, July, you have to join the EU. And if you do not, we will cut off trade with you. So you've got to have a referendum. That's how panicky EU is. Yeah, quite, quite extraordinary. Uh, and, and I have to ask you, Olive, uh, if we do leave without a deal, um, it's obviously spiritually better for us. And, uh, you know, the whole debate, I've been so angry about this whole Brexit debate because I've been arguing about the economy, the political uncertainty, but never has there been a discussion about the fact that this is about our sovereignty and this is about our freedom, uh, our freedom to make our own laws, our, our, our freedom to be outside of a, of a political union um, that is pushing for further and further political integration. And it's President Macron who's driving this federalist move. So clearly with Britain out, uh, what's to stop the EU then from accelerating with its plans and ambitions to create a European superstate? Because this is what we're dealing with. I think that we're dealing absolutely without, without any shadow of a doubt towards European superstate mm. and, and all of the implications of that spiritually and in, and in every other way. I mean, I think that it is absolutely catastrophic what is, what is happening and that we are, have, or have been caught up in this and uh, willy-nilly uh, after the results of the referendum and having a prime minister who is a Romaner but actually said, no, 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 I'm actually going to support what the people said, but it hasn't worked. And so we are, we are just in, locked into, um, a, you know, almost deadlock. But I believe that the Lord is delivering us. That's what I, yeah. I have felt from that psalm, everything else that we have, have said. And I believe that it's going to happen. And the no, uh, the no uh, deal looks terrifying from, from uh, a business point of view because of all of the, the, the deals and everything else that have to be in place once we come out. That seems like a, 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 you know, Himalayas to climb. But the fact is that it's not. No. It's not a climb up Mount Everest. 
you know, and the people who are in the know all say that. Mm. And I know that Dominic Raab, for example, uh, I don't know what he, uh, what his, uh, where he is spiritually, but um, I know his brother, who is a fantastic Christian, and, and he has said, why don't you just say, bye, <laughs> and yep. walk off? Yep. And this, you know, this is an astonishing thing that says, surrounded by this incredible drama and all the rest, if we do just walk, I bet you that within a very, very short space of time, they would have sorted everything out. Even Dover, they have said, you know, if, if we were to leave, in a very short space of time, they would just got, they would have cleaned everything up and the thing will be functioning. You know, so, so it's the politics of fear. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That, that, that's what has been put upon us. Yeah. Uh, and, and David, we're, we're in the closing minutes of the programme, so it very much feels like when we were approaching the new millennium with the millennium bug and uh, <laughs> everyone was saying the planes will fall out of the sky and everything else, and they're saying the same thing about Brexit now. But um, we do have to overcome that kind of spirit of fear, uh, which is predominant in our nation. So in terms of all the political drama that's taking place, everything to do with Brexit, um, how can you advise? Our, our, our viewers to, to pray and uh, how can they stand firm in these days? Just have the faith, a real gift of faith on the, in you that, that, that it is going to go well because once we've broken that spiritual break with Brussels, I believe that the Lord is going to have a spiritual tsunami of, of flowing over this nation. This nation is going to be blessed. Remember we had the Commonwealth and the Commonwealth want to bless us. Every, there's going to be such unity I mean, the other thing, the other day, what was it? Um, the unemployment, as I, I may have mentioned already, the unemployment, the lowest since 1974, and you got Brexit around the corner. But I don't think there's anything to fear. People just need to know that God's going to use it as a wake-up call, but also to prove that he will bless this nation like never before. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds, Olive, uh, how can we pray at this crucial time in this nation's history? Well, we know that, the, that we have a Lord that rules over all. And I believe that we, uh, that we bring in the name of the Lord, that we cover ourselves with the, with the, with the blood, the shed blood of Jesus in this incredible battle. And we know that he overcame the grave. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, that he, in, by the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that he is going to overcome all of these negative forces that there are that seek to kill our soul. Mm -hmm. When I've said we've read that scripture, I believe our soul is not killed, is not overwhelmed, uh, that we shall be free. Uh, Olive and uh, David, thank you so much for being my guests on, on, on politics today. And as intercessors, you got your work cut out. But uh, we're pleased that you're praying. And I just want to thank you all for watching Politics Today. Clearly, Brexit is on a knife edge. We have uh, incredible political trauma uh, taking place in the House of Commons as we kind of unwrestle ourselves from the European Union. And there's an incredible spirit of fear that's in our nation. But we should be bold, just like a Joshua, to defeat the giants. So thank you for watching today's Politics Today.